the Monday of Royal Ascot Week at Windsor Castle, the traditional date for the annual procession of Britain's most exclusive order of chivalry. The Order of the Garter honors the country's most illustrious men and women. Edward III was inspired to found the order in 1348 when it said a lady's garter fell off at a ball. Then, as now, no more than 26 knights were appointed. The most solemn rite of the day is the investiture, when the sovereign herself dresses new knights in their robes and insignia. A few paintings exist of this once private ceremony, but it has never been filmed until now. The Garter Throne Room in Windsor Castle. The original Black Rod and Garter King of Arms were appointed to run the order in the 15th century. Today, their successors lead the Queen's procession. Garter and Black Rod, pray summon the companions elect. Three new knights have come to be invested. One is the former Prime Minister, Sir Edward Heath. My lords and ladies, pray be seated. As custom demands, Sir Edward has chosen two other members of the order to help with the ritual. The Right Honourable Sir Edward Richard George Heath. Uh, the two knights of the Garter who supported me were Lord Carrington. The other one was uh, Lord Callaghan, who was formerly the Labour Prime Minister, who also I've known for many, many years, and we've always got on perfectly well together. I thought it was a very suitable thing that I, on the garter I shouldn't be politically biased, but that I have sh should have supporters from the two main parties. Well, the garter is held there on, uh, on a cushion, and uh, the Queen takes the garter and then hands it to the page. Uh, the page then kneels down and places it round your leg, just beneath the knee. While this is going on, then the bishop, who is the chaplain to the order, reads out the historical injunction of the knights as to how they should behave, what they should do, and how they serve the monarch and the country. Into which thou shalt be engaged, thou mayest stand firm, valiantly fight, courageously and successfully conquer. And then she takes the sash, which is a superb, rich, dark blue color. And she places it over the left shoulder. Uh, the garter, along with the order of the Knight of the Thistle, well, is um, they're the, the only two which are placed over the left shoulder of all the honors in this country. Christ, St. George. She takes the star and pins it on the jacket on one's breast. The Queen, with the help of one's sponsors, one on the right and one on the left, uh, puts the gown around one. They help to lift it up, and then she takes it uh, from the front, uh, one side in each hand, and then finally folds it round one in augmentation of thine honour, ennobled with the shield and red cross of our Lord, by whose power thou mayst safely pierce troops of thine enemies, and be over them ever victorious, thou mayst obtain eternal and triumphant joy. When I was standing in front of the Queen, I felt how important she is and the monarchy is to our country. She was symbolic 
of everything which had gone before. And uh, she fulfills that purpose magnificently. So I couldn't help feeling at the time that this was for me very humbling, but at the same time, uh, honorable occasion. <laughs> 